Okay, so first question would be, um, I suppose, have you always wanted to work in the IT industry? And I suppose start from that is, so what did you know about it you know, before? So were you always wanted to, so you knew a lot about it and stuff, or did you arrive by accident, just, just your uh, journey to the IT industry? No, I, that was not my dream, actually. My family dream was to become a doctor, a medical doctor. Um, but um, I really didn't feel that this is really something that I would be able to do, first of all. Um, but you have to understand, I'm born Romanian. And um, in, 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 in the days when I was young and I was trying to figure out what my career should be, um, I stumbled in the, um, on cybernetics. Now, cybernetics today sounds very, uh, a little bit a term that uh, I have to explain sometimes, but in my time, cybernetics was the buzzword of the day. It was a bit like the artificial intelligences today or other notions that I keep repeating in the IT world. And it attracted me because the notion and what it brought was um, for me a way of changing the world or make it better. Um, it was new. Uh, it was, um, the university was only in Bucharest. And on top of that, um, one of the fathers of cybernetics is a Romanian. He's not very much known uh, because he got in conflict with the communist regime. So he spent many years of his life in house arrest. Uh, but you're young, you want to change the world like every young generation should. And of course you are attracted if someone goes against the regime through your revolutionary youth. Um, and also you're attracted about the science that promised to make the lives of the people better. So this is how I ended up in cybernetics. And um, I finished the university. Uh, then the revolution came, and it was a tremendous opportunity for all of us. Um, so I have been lucky enough to be in a group of five people. Um, there was um, someone older than us that was um, already in the IT industry that um, gathered us together, and we opened probably one of the first private companies in Romania, and we took the IBM representation. And, you know, for, for a young person that graduates cybernetics, being able to work for IBM in those days was like a dream came reality. Um, so there was tremendous times, wonderful times when we built up basically the basis of IBM in Romania. And IBM uh, bought us to, after several years of being very successful and becoming the uh, biggest IT company in Romania, and this is how afterwards I, I got to, to work for IBM. So that was how it started. Okay, um, and from, from that um, start, what are the steps? I mean, you say you worked for IBM for quite a while, I think. So from there to where you are today at 3Step IT, it'd be good to understand the, the journey. Was it straight from IBM to where you are now, or were there other um, stops along the way? Look, IBM is, um, was and is, I think, uh, uh, an incredible company. And I have to say that they are most of all a wonderful school. Uh, you meet people that are very well prepared because they were uh, picking, you know, the, the, the right people from, from the best schools. Um, I had um, a technical education, but then they uh, helped me to have an MBA with the Open University in London. So they paid for this. So this is how I got uh, to put together IT and technology with the business side. But the company itself was an incredible school. Uh, and once they would detect talent, uh, they would move you in various functions uh, and in various countries. So I had the courage to jump in, in many opportunities that were given to me. So from Romania, I went to Austria, where I localized. Uh, in Austria, I, was, I had various responsibilities doing, for example, 
uh, mega deals, government deals for a while in, in East European countries that wanted to ascend to the European Union. So there were um, incredible, interesting uh, IT projects like registration populations, customs controls, and so on and so forth. I moved then to London uh, in another job uh, that was as a credit officer for IBM in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, from there, I made the center in Budapest. From there, I jumped into Italy, where I was running the IBM Global Financing um, Unit uh, for, um, for Italy. Um, and then from there, I moved in another department of IBM, which was called GBS, Global Business Services, which was the consultancy part of IBM. Useless to say that all these moves um, and all this experience, they, they enrich you tremendously uh, because you learn so many things, so many different things. Um, and you learn first on your job, on, on, on def different aspects of your job and technology and how technology can play uh, in different areas, uh, but you also come out culturally extremely enriched because you have the opportunity to work uh, in different culture, to understand how they approach business. And, and Europe is, is wonderful for that because uh, we are all different and this diversity is, uh, is very enriching. So after 20 years, when I felt I accumulated a lot of knowledge uh, and I know a lot of things. I, I felt that maybe it is time for me to change uh, and do something different and uh, maybe give back some of the old the knowledge that I have accumulated through the experience that IBM offered me. And uh, one day I got a call, you know, it's a, it's a phone call with, and, a, a, and a very short message. Are you interested to be the CEO of an international company, a medium-sized international company, private company? So, you know, you, you have this uh, uh, feeling that this is something you have to pursue. Uh, I did. And I moved uh, in Finland, which was uh, not uh, a country I have been before, even though I was having European jobs. And I moved to Trista Python. And the reason I moved was, first of all, I met um, a chairman that was extremely passionate about the business model of Tristep IT. And also because I fell in love with this model because it put together IT with such sustainability. Um, it had a great ambition, uh, a great confidence in the model that this model is worthwhile being, you know, um, uh, being expanded to other customers in Europe. And it had very big ambition um, because it wanted to grow, it wanted to develop uh, exactly what I feel I have been doing in my life in various uh, parts and, and businesses in IBM. And also something that takes me, you know, something that I would like to do to put all my knowledge um, in this direction, developing things uh, uh, that I believe in, developing things uh, around technology, but also by doing that, doing good. And this is what, this is why I was attracted by this type idea, and this is why I moved in 2015. And in terms of your your journey, I mean, the, the way you describe it, it it's it's exciting and it, it's not obvious that um, there were issues along the way, but I suspect you did encounter challenges. And I'm just wondering whether you would classify those as a sort of normal business challenges or the fact that you were in a, a female in you know the IT space, which is traditionally and still you know, regrettably somewhat male dominated. Were you aware that sometimes the fact that you were a woman in a, a fairly you know, male dominated world was an issue or, or if you because of your, you know, your background and your success, that, that, that didn't sort of occur much? Well, look, again, I have to come with my origin and where I spent my childhood and youth. So there is good and bad, there was good and bad about communist regime. Um, I'm not gonna talk about the bad, 
But I want to highlight the fact that in Romania, um, men and women had to work. So there was no way that you would sustain a family, that you will be able to live in a family if men and women uh, would not both work. Uh, as opposed to some Western societies where the man is bringing the bread and the, some women are staying at home, raising the children. That was not doable. So um, from the outset, you have a kind of a equal equality, so to speak, because they have, they both have to work. Um, and then, you know, in Romania specifically, you have Ceausescu, he was the father of the nation. And you have Elena Ceausescu, she was the mother of the nation. So it was, it was, so to speak, I, I, I never thought that should be a difference between men and women. My mother was working, she was very successful in her work. Um, there was a perfect respect in my family in, for the work that each one was bringing at home. And honestly, from home, I never, never, never thought that if I'm a girl, I should be treated in a different way. Um, so I, I left my country, I went to Austria with this, um, so to speak, um, I, I, I don't know how to say it, with not being conscious that being a woman, I would, I would encounter any issues. Uh, and this gives you a certain confidence or, or maybe a lack of an awareness that it helps you in certain circumstances, because when I entered the room, I never thought of myself as a woman. I thought of myself as a person that has some value to bring at the table. Now, having said that, there are challenges in, in anyone leaving the country and trying to make a career in work. There were specific challenges for me uh, that I discovered though, when I went to Austria, I, I didn't know that they existed. Um, and 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 the many biases. So one bias is that you are a woman and you are in IT, which is not very common. At least in the in the early 90s, it was not. Um, but then you come from Eastern Europe, and in those days, Eastern Europe. So you're a woman. You come from Eastern Europe, uh, and you are in IT. Wow, you know what is that? That was quite novel in in those days. Now, when in IT. The majority, there were women on IT and IBM in the company, but they were normally in functions like HR or communication or marketing, not really in IT or in the business, basically, of selling IT or creating solutions in IT. So I think my first difficulty was to leave the country and go to Austria. So that was a, a little bit of first shock, so to speak. And then I moved to London and there was a little bit of a second shock, but I have to say I was already less than the first one. And then in London, I, I can't say that the bias was necessarily that I was a woman, but it was more that I was an Eastern European coming, running credits and, and the financial things in the world where London is the head of the financial markets, you have all these people, you know, that know how everything works. And suddenly you have someone from Eastern Europe to come and lead uh, that business there. So, so obviously there were a lot of challenges. I mean, my way, and I, I come with the fact that I love diversity. I love various cultures. What I try to do always in my, and help me in my career was, you might be surprised, but it was humor. So I think humor brings people together. So I always thought that if I can make a joke and some someone in the room is laughing, I already, I already, I'm already closer to them uh, than before. And in terms of, I mean, where you you've got to, you've obviously been very successful. Um, so do do I just wonder, do you feel? having got where you've got an obligation or an interest in helping other folks, you know, in a diversity perspective, whether it's, you know, helping the equality or, or you know, other, as I say, or minority groups. So do you, do you feel a particular responsibility or do you just think it should be part of everybody's job when you've got to the level you have to, to make sure that those things are, are, you know, looked after in a proper fashion? I, I, I give an example. So in the early 90s, IBM was probably one of the first companies 
um, that in Europe they set up, I remember it was 96 or 97, they set up, um, it was called the Women Leadership Council. And we were 16 women in, in that time. Uh, and they called me and they said, do you wanna be in this council as a representative or Eastern Europe, Middle Eastern Africa? And quite frankly, I reacted in a, oh gosh, uh, women council, what? what's for me to do in that, you know? Why do I wanna do that? Again, because my feeling that, you know, you are, you bring value. So why do you need to have to do anything of that? But of course I, I, I um, accepted. And then at one point in time, I, uh, when, I, when I moved jobs, and, and this, this was very well received, you know, um, and I started to discuss with women. I started to speak with women from Eastern Europe. I started to understand a little bit the challenges that they perceived the challenges, maybe because I was stronger and I, I, I had my background. It was easier for me to go over them, but I could see a lot of issues. And I could see a lot of people discouraged uh, and leaving the business because they don't feel, you know, women are appreciated in IT. And so this is when I started this journey. Then I remember when I got my executive role in London, I was probably among the first women getting an executive, which was a big role in those days in IBM. And I received so many letters and messaging. There was an IBM messaging in these times for women that I didn't even know uh, and saying, oh, that is so great. You're from Eastern Europe, you're a woman and you got this incredible position. It means that there is hope for us. Uh, and, and this, honestly, this really, really impressed me. Uh, and I was thinking, gosh, this, this means I have a responsibility and I have a duty to do something and to bring, to give some courage to these wonderful women that there are so many more talents than I am. You know, I, I just, you know, happen to be among the first having this. So yes, I've done a lot of work in, in IBM, uh, mentoring uh, young talents, young girls, with whom I would even speak today. Um, and when I moved to London, for example, uh, my job there afterwards was uh, in IBM Global Financing, I was one of the funding members of the Leasing Foundation in the UK. And the part that I was working and doing in those days was to mentor, but also to organize workshops and discussions with women in the industry and, and try to understand their issues, their challenges, help them work through these challenges, giving some examples, showcasing my own life and my own experience, trying to say how I overcome some of them. So yes, I have this very much at heart and everywhere I went, also in, in Trista IT and today in, in the BMP Paribas Leasing Solution, uh, this is something I take as a personal responsibility, not, uh, necessary a corporate or a business personal uh, responsibility, but as a personal one. And in terms of the, how you've seen things, again, obviously you've highlighted that, you know, at least when you're in Rome, you weren't aware it was a problem. And then you had a bit, you know, a bit of a sort of a you know, sort of shock when you, you found it in other places. But, but in terms of how the landscape has evolved when it comes to inclusivity, diversity, so do, do you, are you encouraged at what's been achieved? Or are you still slightly, I don't know, depressed or, or that perhaps it hasn't gone as far as it needs to? And, and to that point, if I can ask the supplement, are there other things you think need need to be done? Or is it just a question of doing more of the same? Or, or would you like to see some sort of bold changes to help with the, whether it's the equality or, and or the diversity piece? Well, first of all, I'm never depressed. <laughs> I, am, I am rather an optimist. Um, a person and obviously many change have many things have changed right so you hear more even the discussion we are having today uh i wouldn't have had it uh, i don't know 20 years ago so i do see a lot of attention given to diversity 
um, more companies have these as their policies. I see more attention giving to women, more um, programs like yours that try to showcase some of the personal experiences that women had in technology. There is no doubt that there is more awareness uh, and more forces that are trying uh, to, to make sure that the women have the right opportunity and the right choice. Because in the end, what we want, we want to have, to be able to have a choice uh, and to have the means uh, to achieve our dreams. Having said that, I believe there is still huge amount of work to be done. Uh, and what I'm saying in terms of numbers and even this Corona period, I think it, it brought us a little bit backwards as opposed to bringing us um, uh, towards uh, progressing. So many, many things. And, and if I am to, to, to say a couple of things, I, I also believe it starts with the family and the education um, because you have families that have a boy and they have a girl and the boy gets the computer and and the cars and the girl gets the dolls and, and whatever. So I think there is an encouragement and there is something to be done from the very beginning, you know. Um, give girls the courage that mat mathematics is not such a difficult thing. Girls are smart. They can understand mathematics. They can understand technology. So I think this is for me something that from home, you're already a little bit biased into which direction you wanna go. And I think also companies can do a lot uh, still. Uh, there are various surveys that show that, and I think there was a Deloitte survey very recently that said that very few women, uh, a minor percentage, 38 or 35, I, I, I can't remember well, but they don't feel they are encouraged uh, in their work uh, in technology. And a lot of them are planning to leave. So I think creating an environment and, and getting rid of some biases that exists sometimes, even subconsciously, you know, um, there's a lot of work of doing that. Um, personally, I was against quotas. I have to be very honest. Uh, I, I was completely against quotas. Um, and I thought, I, when I was young, I was even taking it as an insult uh, because again, I, I wanted people to appreciate for the skills I'm bringing uh, and for the value I'm bringing. Now, having more experience and, and seeing more things, I changed a little bit my vision about the quotas. And I think when you wanna move uh, and, and force a change, they are probably necessary, but I think having a quota is not enough. You need to go into more granularity and understand, you know, you have a company, you have a quota, but where, where are these women? So you need to go more granular and understand, are they in finance? Are they in business? Are they in administration? Where are they? So again, this is also something that um, I reconsidered my opinions and I think in certain situations and applied in a proper way, not for the sake of having a quota, they can also help move the needle a little bit. Okay, and maybe just uh, in, in finishing, for, for folks who are either looking, you know, starting, looking to start a career or for people maybe looking to move across into the IT space, um, have you got any advice as to how easy or difficult it is for them to identify a company that is is sort of shall we say progressive when it comes to you know the topics we've been discussing or is it as simple as going to their website and if they don't have a sort of esg statement or policy or whatever you go okay that's not great or do you think it's possible to join a company without knowing and then hopefully discovering or maybe having to work to, to influence i just thoughts i suppose as to you know when you're think, look, entering the space how easy it is to to find the right kind of company i mean it's um it's um we speak about changes in terms of diversity i think technology is changing also technology is not the same as when i studied in the university by far um and technology and digitalization is so pervasive that's in everything 
today, you know. So it, it is not that you choose a, a, an IT career and you necessarily need to go to a company like IBM, like I did. You know, there are many applications of technology, many areas uh, where technology is helping and when where you need to find your spot. So I think young people today also have um, a more comprehensive way of choosing the company they want to work for. Um, and I see I have I have children myself and I see how they look at the choices they are making. And irrespective if you if you start with technology, you can still pick up a company that combines technology with something that is attractive to you. I can give you the example of uh, the Trista IT and BMP Trista IT. We are we are, this is a company that offers services around technology lifecycle management, and it's it is doing it in a way to make technology more manageable, affordable. Um, in a way that would uh, cut the digital divide because we take the equipment, we refurbish it, and we resell as used to some categories and companies that don't necessarily afford to, to buy the new technology. So this is a way when technology is combined with sustainability, with the ESG. So it's a, not, a different angle of looking at technology. So. We see a lot of attraction from young people that want to be in a technology environment, but also they want to have and to be in a company where they believe they are doing also something good for the environment, for the businesses, but also for society at large. So I think the angles today in how we look at technology are far wider uh, and they change compared to what it was many years ago when technology meant you go, you do programming and you go into a IT department in a company. Okay, um, we'll have to leave there time wise, but it'd be great to follow up, find out certainly more about what, what the company does because sustainability is obviously another big, big area. Right. So we'll, hopefully we'll have a part two, but at least for now, Carmen, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you.